On this note, I'd like to invite our guest of honor in the person of Honorable Mrs. Elizabeth Saki to give us a short address. Oh, please, let's give her a standing ovation as we can. In all humility, with all due respect, can we sing this independent uh, Christ-like song which would ginger us like we sing the national anthem and many others. I want you to join me to sing this song. Me be re ma kuma asi na ma ye niawa ashe mino I'm singing this song because it always challenges me. Since I started as a politician, I've used this song as me, my personal anthem. And every morning after my prayers, I remind myself that I'm not of my own, nor do I own any power. I'm being controlled by the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. So I listen to whatever the Holy Spirit says, and I do just that. I stand on this, the various respectful acknowledgements. And our own patron, Pastor, Apostle David can come be dear to be dear to be dear be dear and Apostle Samuel Obobi acknowledging all people if I say I have to mention names like the person who came to introduce the guests to do I will falter, and I don't think I'm ready to pay any ransom of money to anybody in Jesus Christ's name. So I wouldn't want to go that way, but I stand on all protocols to duly respect everybody and welcome you all to this August meeting. In fact, looking at the team, Repositioning the Community Children's Club for Maximum Impact. Really, I'm so happy to be called upon to become the guest of Anna. Indeed, I should be honest and to, tell you, to announce to you this afternoon that I started as a little girl at Tamale and whilst we were attending the children's movement, those days were the Apostle Isiama and Apostle Apoasanti and then Apostle Ele Nyakudem. And one day we ha had an, a, a sketch like what we did right now. And I was the orator. Why is trying to tell the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? I suddenly found myself prophesying at the age of seven. And I had to tell all of them that this is what God wants you to do. You need to clean the, Lord, the Lord's house and get people going. And as I, spent, uh, I kept on saying that, I started weeping. Then my siblings, as we went home, they started irritating what I did say. That's why anytime there's any problem or any challenge in the house, they say, 
you go and stand at the pulpit and cry. They kept on every day. So that rather led me to be very cautious, look at my lifestyle, and be very watchful to what I do. Little ones, no matter your age, the Lord wants to use you. My dear ones, no matter how old you are, God is ready to use you as a tool to equip you and to quicken you to get more souls unto his kingdom. I remember in my family, there are so many twins, but there's no terrier. I was born out of the prayer that my dad held. He was then a member of the Church of Pentecost. I was born into the church. And my dad would never hesitate to go for prayer meeting at one time I And whilst at the prayer meeting, there was a prophecy that Elder Sa'eda quoting. Sorry, I wanted to use my husband's name. Elder Quarte, there is somebody in your house. The person's motion there is not for anything than to kill your wife and to kill your child that will be born. In those days, prophecies are direct. They mention you and tell you, thou said the Lord, even when you enter the church room and you have heard, the prophecy will just come and hit you at the door and the entrance before you even go to sit down. Because before others come, the room is charged. So when you come, you don't have time to have anybody to chat with or converse with. The moment you enter, that room is charged, so you have to join them and pray. I thank God I'm experiencing that now in our midst. Brethren, the good old days have come to pass. But then whilst I was writing my message this yesterday, thinking of the program that will be done, then I felt in my heart that when you go, just tell them about your own story, your own experience. And lo and behold, this dropped into my heart. Whilst my father was at the prayer grounds, seriously praying, because he was just have come out of some other Orthodox churches that, that we knew. And he's come to meet a group who are seriously praying and asking God for their dates and their wants, and God is answering them, doing marvelous works in the midst of the people. So whilst he kept on praying and the prophecy came, he patiently finished praying and then he came home. When he came home, he asked my mom, what has happened? And my mom told her, him that, oh, your brother just came. He placed his luggage down. Lo and behold, there was a scorpion that came out of the luggage. And we all know that scorpions, during those days, it takes about three days, one week before you get to the north. So let's, let's assume that it should be one of those incidents. But the moment the scorpion came out of his luggage, God gave my mom another strength. My mom is still alive. And this is the Pentecostal days. Gave her another strength. And when she stood up and took, she was heavily pregnant took her slippers and killed the scorpion. Immediately, the scorpion was killed. My uncle took his luggage and left the house. This is the girl you are seeing standing here. So if God has done this for me, I have become the first lady, the first young woman to come out of the family and God, through his grace and wisdom, has brought me this far. What do you expect me 
to do. I have to give my whole unto the Lord. Thank God, I've not only been the first terrier in the family, I became the first terrier to, be, to win the Letra Area Assembly member whilst I was being discouraged. Oh, there have been so women. Why do you worry yourself? Don't worry. Don't become an MP, uh, an assembly member. Thank God I won the election. And it was the first ever high figure won in Great Accra. After that, I said it's, not, it's enough. But the Lord then told me, when we had gone for a presbytery meeting at Kandeshi, where Apostle Anson retired, was leading the force. And that time, the theme for the year was, Oh Lord, let thy kingdom come. I was there while the sermon followed one after the other. The last day, I was seriously contemplating on the messages that had come. And I said to myself, Lord, what then do you want me to do? The Lord spoke edibly for me to hear through the Holy Spirit that you always sit down here, gather yourself in the church room, praying for politicians, but you don't even know what is there in politics. And then the question came, as if you are sick and you go to the hospital, what do the doctors do? I said, first they have to diagnose you. They have to let you go for some medical exams. And so that was the answer I gave. Then God spoke. He said, now you, I'm sending you to the field. You've got to join the politicians there. And when you have seen what they do, you come back and report to your people so that they can stand in for them. You can't pray without knowing what is happening. So I told Apostle Anson, this is what the Lord has said. Apostle Anson just said, Hey, Pentecost is there. Politics is there. One say, yeah. One more man won't go. And they would die, sorry, no. And I told him, Papa, I'm not ready to leave the church. But that's said the Lord. He said, okay. That week we'll be going for a council meeting. I will tender your request and see what will happen. Fortunately for me, he went for the meeting at Koforidia. Then he quickly called and told me, She, me nyan kama sem kura. Inna cha man, unto me, eti message ba e se. O bibi e ra wa ba ha. A wo bibi e wo wo district and I would will look at her. No person o di ni hu real politics mono. Man hu kwen. So he quickly rushed and I knew if he had telephone like we have now, he would have called to tell me that, oh, the door is opened. But he rushed from Koforidra straight to my house and told me that the Lord has granted your request. We all will be praying with you. Go and you will be an icon that many will have to tap on porn. And truly, I said to myself, Lord, since you have sent me, I'm not going to be on my own. I will look up unto you like the servants look up unto their masters. So that wherever you direct me, wherever you lead me, wherever you order my steps, I will go. Dear brethren, the doors are open and says that what the CCC is doing. You gather everybody, no matter where the background, background is, and just spread the gospel. It was upon that passion that I felt the need to gather these little ones in my house, training them from the onset, train the child the way he should go, and when she is gone, she will never depart from it. Today, here I stand. 
after 124 years, AMA never had a female mayor. I'm now the first female mayor after 124 years. My brothers, you can do it. My sisters, you can make it. We can possess the nation. The nation does not belong to anybody. It belongs to God. And it is God who has given us the power and authority to possess the nation. So no matter what your situation is, I want to at this time encourage all teachers who are training these little ones, who are bringing them to the Lord. My joy is full when I have seen a lot of my Sunday school teachers being pastors and apostles and they are still and I can boldly mention names but I don't think that is what we need now but be bold and be proud that whatever time I waste I do not waste it in vain but I'm wasting this time because I know the Lord my God in heaven above is going to reward me abundantly in the next future even when I have left this earth. Let's seek for the things on earth, in heaven, and look up to Christ, the beginner and the finisher of our salvation, and he will surely, surely, surely reward you. Before I end, I want us all to bear in mind that all these little ones that we see around us are our future leaders. They can become whatever we wish them to be. It takes our prayer, it takes our dedication, it takes our passion to bring these children to where we want, to the level that we want them to be. And in future, we will not be talking about uh, corruption and then bad uh, political leaders and many others. But when we devote ourselves and we try to build up little ones as the teachers are doing, as we are seated behind supporting the teachers, your prayer can do, your tokens can do, and many of the things you want. You can even gather the children in your home and then call a teacher. Oh, come and take care of them. And you'll be finding some token for him to take transport. That alone, God will acknowledge it and God will recognize your good works. So let us all get involved. We are all involved to build our Ghana, our Ghana land. This nation needs Christians. Gone are the days when we sit behind and say, oh, they should go to parliament, they should go to assembly, they should go there and do. All the demons will be there and they will plan what you wouldn't like for you. But when you, say when I, when I have prepared these little ones, they will become the future leaders of our nation. And then we will have our peace. God bless you all and thank you. Jesus.